So here we are in uh, Kigali in Rwanda. Um, we're here with a charity called Hope and Homes for Children. Um, and they're a charity that supports children and supports families. And as, as part of that, they close down orphanages or institutions. Um, and I know that they're very passionate about it um, and seem incredibly convincing. What I don't know at the moment is uh, how convinced I am about it or whether it's necessarily always a good idea to shut down orphanages. Maybe sometimes orphanages can be a good thing. Isn't it better to be an orphanage than a child abandoned or on the street? Um, and can't there be beautifully run, lovely orphanages in which children thrive? So the plan for this week is, first of all, to go and see the first orphanage that Hope and Homes has been working with and plans to shut down, to de-institutionalise. Um, and this one is going to act as a sort of pilot project, um, which if all goes well, they'll roll out and close down other institutions across the country. Um, we hope to meet the manager there and some of the children and um, I'll get a feeling for just how bad the problem is. We set up the institution in 1994 after the genocide. Children were everywhere, living on the streets. The reason we started the institution was a calling from God. God had sent us to do the work of rescue. First thing I think that's obvious here is what good intentions um, the orphanage manager has. You know, she took these kids in and she saw a need. But the first thing we saw when we came in here was um, a locked door with a padlock on it. And the kids kind of climbing all over the gate. It's quite difficult to come around this side. Actually, the wind's blowing in the right direction at the moment. But um, when the wind's blowing in the wrong direction, it smells pretty bad around here. You can see here's the showers, two showers. I think they've had up to about sort of 50 children. Well, I'm genuinely pretty shocked by what we saw today. Um, and the more I think about it, the more sort of upset I am by it. And the, the, real, sort of, the real proof was in how the children behaved themselves. Um, some of them, especially the little ones, they were either very, very needy and wanting to be hugged all the time and picked up, or they were really quite sort of disengaged, quite sort of seemingly shell-shocked. Um, one little girl just wouldn't look at anyone and wouldn't speak. Um, she was a three-year-old, she should have been running around and laughing, but she was absolutely mute and silent even when you picked her up. And, uh, you know, after, after what I've seen today, I think that almost any environment especially a family environment, it was better than that one for children. Uh, the situation of children living in Rwanda, it is bad. There are more than 3,600 children within the institutions. We have found that more than 70% of children living in the pilot institution are not really orphans. And we believe even for the 30 remaining, it's because we have not yet get their parents, but we know that they are not really orphans. Child abandonment is primarily due to poverty, prostitution, and underage or unprotected sex. Often, parents think it is in the child's best interest to take them to an institution. Whether the institution treats them well or not, we no longer support having children in institutions because each child needs a family to be loved, to be educated and looked after. To prevent children entering institutions in the first place, Hope and Homes for Children set up community hubs where vulnerable children can get the support that they need. It is open for the whole community, for family planning, for training to run income generating activities. We provide the daycare.
the institutionalization had different options, but we prioritized the, the, the birth and extended family. But if it is not the case, there is the foster care. Uh, there is also local adoption. Um, after what we saw this morning, um, I'm absolutely convinced that a family is always the right place for a child. Um, the first family we visited was a little boy and he came out to greet us with his family, um, holding his grandmother and grandfather by the hands and just looking so proud of them. And uh, what I hadn't really realised before is that a family gives you something to belong to and be proud of in a way you can't an institution. And um, he just seemed so happy. If this visit has taught me anything, it's that um, an institution, however good it is, can never replace a family. Um, it's almost as if a, a child's developing mind is a sort of lock that needs to be turned, and the key to turning it is a family in all its complexity. Um, and therefore, you know, the obvious conclusion is that it's insane and, and wrong to, be, to keep on pumping money into these institutions in the hope that making them better will um, serve children because they won't. Nothing can replace a family. It'd be so much better for both private individuals and governments to put money into, um, into securing families instead of institutions. I believe that the future is going to be better and we will never regret that this institution is closed because I've already seen positive progress portraying a better future. The success of the institutionalization in Rwanda, in the heart of Africa, will be one important step to doing the institutionalization in the region, why not in all Africa? <laughs>